Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Kefi Golden Copper PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your question at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself, given the significant attendance on today's call. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and we'll publish those responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll, and I'm sure the company would like uh, would appreciate your participation and I'd now like to hand over to CEO good afternoon uh, hello there it's Harry and Agnostadas Adams here uh, thank you for taking the trouble to join us um, what I'd like to do is to uh, give you uh, a walk through the corporate presentation and then to take questions um, I, I'm aware that some people are on this call who are, are, are unfamiliar with the company or not terribly familiar with the company. So please bear with me if I'm repeating something that many of you may know because there are people in the webinar who, who um, are being brought up to speed. Uh, without any further ado, I'll kick off. And um, on the screen... Uh, the photo is of the Tulakabi deposit, that's the hill in the middle, a quiet rural district in um, western uh, Ethiopia. And uh, the most important milestone for the company uh, is the closing of the financing and launching of the project for Tulakabi, where we are literally in the thick of closing procedures, and I'll take you through it uh, in some detail. Uh, as, as we go through the presentation. It is a $390 million package. The financing has been arranged at the uh, project and uh, subsidiary level. The stock markets are uh, not terribly uh, buoyant in the mining sector, uh, particularly junior mining. It's in fact, uh, I'm told AIM is uh, the lowest uh, it's been since it was uh, created as an, a stock exchange in 19... Uh, 95. Uh, therefore, we've avoided use of the stock market for the development capital, and um, I'll take you through that as well. Uh, standard disclaimer, just stating the obvious that perhaps some people uh, forget, but uh, when we make public statements, forward-looking statements, you know, prognosis statements, obviously we can only do our best, but um, they are forward-looking and uh, we can't indemnify or guarantee the outcome. We entered the area that we focus on, the Arabian Nubian Shield, in 2008 and started in Saudi Arabia, where we've been for 15 years. And I'd have to say that half of the time we were in Saudi Arabia, it was probably a bit of a waste of time because regulations held us up terribly frankly, but that's all history now because as of a couple of years ago, uh, the regulations were overhauled and um, <clears throat> it's uh, sort of, um, you know, on everyone's lips in the mining sector now internationally, Saudi Arabia, because uh, regulatory reform has made it rapid fire for those who are in a position to, uh, to do things. And we have the largest exploration team in the country in our joint venture vehicle there. We've made two discoveries because we have been there 15 years, even though half of it we couldn't work, but the other half we did work and we made two discoveries, which is testament, I think, to the prospectivity of Saudi Arabia. Not to say, not to mention the fact that, you know, the team's a very good team and performed very well, as it continues to do. We've been granted 14 licenses in the last 18 months or so, um, which again is testament to to how things are moving there. And that compares with probably, uh, I've lost track now, but maybe three licenses in the previous uh, 14 years. So it's completely changed. And we're at the forefront. We're at the front of that queue. We have a very strong partner, a uh, Fortune 100 uh, uh, family office, a conglomerate in the country. And uh, we're, we're the technical guys, so to speak, the technical partner. And we have a strong team. Ethiopia today is even more important and even more of a turnaround, frankly, although perhaps not so well publicised or generally understood. 
But Ethiopia, when I first went there 10 years ago, um, security was sort of a non-issue, to be honest. Uh, but then after we overhauled our project, the Tula Kapi project, getting it ready for financing and launch, the country went into some turmoil. And uh, it's fair to say that it was, again, wasted some years on us because we couldn't proceed. It was un. Uh, you know, it's impossible to bring hundreds of millions of dollars of capital to a country that was going through so much turmoil. And it was to do with the introduction of democracy, all good intent, all good you know, purpose, but frankly, it unleashed unbottled uh, tensions and, and conflicts that had been perhaps bottled up uh, maybe for too long, not for me to judge. The fact of the matter is two years ago it turned, and frankly, the turnaround in Ethiopia is even more striking to those who are involved. And we are also there at the forefront of it. Uh, yesterday uh, in uh, Perth, where I am at the moment in Australia, the Minister for Mines made a speech and, you know, it's fair to say that he, his statement acknowledged that Kefi was at the heart of the reform process for the mining industry to turn on the industry and we're the first, we will be the first uh, mine development in in over 30 years, the first development of, of any mine of, of scale. So, you know, we, we happen to be, for the first time, frankly, in 15 years, in go, have, having gone into the Arabian Nubian Shield, one of the great underexplored frontiers. It is a world-class geological terrain. And for the first time in 15 years, we're, we're actually charging forward on, on both fronts. Um, I won't dwell on some of this detail. You can all read it at your leisure and I don't really want to rob time from questions. Uh, but um, let me just say that the, the numbers are strikingly uh, obvious as to the upside here as we de-risk uh, Tula Kapi, which you know, uh, you, you'll see over the next few months as we tick boxes and launch according to our schedule. Uh, the, the numbers of multiples of value will start to, um, uh, I believe, uh, be given the opportunity to reflect themselves in share prices in, in a market in the doldrums uh, for a company that has suffered setback after setback for some years up to um, you know, the last couple of years. Um, I think that that process is, is about to change in the sense that we will be able to move forward and make progress. And and as we do risk, uh, typically, statistically, one can say that it is the norm for the, the market capitalization of a company to start to reflect the underlying intrinsic value on one measure or another as you do risk. And, you know, there's many measures you can use here, but they all show you a lot of upside. And I'll let you study them at, at your leisure. Um, it's no secret that it's coming alive, the Arabian Nubian Shield, and you've got the largest gold producers in the world have arrived. The, uh, the highest profile explorer in the world, Ivanhoe, has just arrived in the last few months. Um, there's other, other very good names there on the list of very well-respected high-profile mining and development and exploration groups who've um, staked their claims in the country, in the region. And um, uh, I think if you chatted with any of the people uh, who are familiar with the activities in in Saudi Arabia and Ethiopia, our name would pop up as, as, as uh, you know, describing to you what I have already said to you, and that is that... Um, you know, we're, we're there having been on the ground for 15 years. We have the projects that are first in the queue for development for those countries. The changes in Ethiopia were not to do with, uh, you know, um, what I would call systemic conflict or, or the, um, or, or the uh, you know, inter-religious uh, group rivalry or uh, international, um, you know, um, conquest type challenges. It was purely and simply the introduction of democracy, which was most, which was 
and completely welcomed, really, uh, by um, almost 100% of the country. Um, and the rapidity of the change lauded by the international um, you know, community and Nobel Peace Prize awarded to the PM and so on. But it was extremely quick, ambitious, rapid change and it brought some tensions and internal conflict, which was resolved a couple of years ago. So we're now moving on. Um, Saudi is uh, not a, a you know um, a volatile place. It's a very steady ship, but the regulations didn't really didn't really let us do our work, and that's the bottom line. And but now they do. So as I said, both countries have turned. Um, the development projects to Lakapi first cab off the rank in finance closing procedures as we speak and um, the two in Saudi Arabia are, are, are quite a bit behind that but we have lined up the capital for Saudi as well in that um, our partner uh, puts up his portion of the equity and um, the sovereign fund, the SIDF, so-called Saudi Industrial Development Fund, uh, is engaging already. And um, we have no doubt that once the board approves development on our two projects there, then financing will follow. But that's that's a bit away yet. Um, these projects take time to to mature them, to prepare them, to get it all right to a bankable stage. That has been done in Ethiopia uh, and it has a bit of, bit of time to run in Saudi Arabia. We have a pipeline of exploration projects. Uh, I would venture to add second to none now, perhaps other than Marden, the government owned company and controlled company in Saudi Arabia, it has a much, much larger portfolio of longer standing, obviously, but in the private sector, perhaps, if I can use that expression, I'm not aware of any group that has such advanced projects in the Arabian Nubian Shield, uh, nor the pipeline we have. And there's a pipeline that we've assembled in Ethiopia that um, will will emerge publicly as uh, tenure is uh, is sorted. Uh, this is just stating the, the same point I made earlier, that the market cap is a fraction of the NPV, and as you do risk and announce, uh, you know, credit approval or financing in Ethiopia will be a big step forward, I think the biggest, um, and, and so on and so forth as you launch, bring into production. Typically, the red catches up with the NPV as you as you bring it into production, and typically typically rates a bit above NPV because of the other things that will happen that are not captured in an NPV. Uh, th these graphs say similar thing. I'll let you study them at your leisure, but um, uh, the, the, the chap who used to run uh, Macquarie Bank uh, Mining Research, perhaps one of the largest research houses for mining uh, globally, uh, has his own shop now, Oriel Capital, and monitors how we rate, and it tells the same story. Relative to other companies, um, we we have not rated up where we will be as we do risk, and that provides the measure of the upside uh, in an objective way. Oops, sorry. Um, I won't go through the detail on this, but the essence of what this chart means is that uh, we have uh, uh, joint venture equity and project finance institutions involved in both Saudi Arabia on the left and involved in Ethiopia on the right. And if you add up all the numbers on the Ethiopian side that we've already uh, lined up, where we have um, uh, preliminary approvals and some already final approvals, um, if you add up all the numbers, you come up to a bit over $390 million. Uh, and over on the left, we haven't got it to the stage of approvals yet because their feasibility studies for those two projects have yet to 
come to conclusion. But they're heading, heading in the right direction. It's just a question of when the resources, which are still open and will grow significantly in our view, uh, when they're big enough to go to go live and, and start production. So it's not a question of whether we'll develop. It's a question of when do we stop drilling for additional resources, get the show on the road, so to speak, and then add more resources later. That's the Saudi story. Not too dissimilar in Tulukapi in Ethiopia, but we're already bankable, so we can start. There's a lot of upside there uh, as well, and it's a high-margin mine, a high-grade mine which is really a striking characteristic. It has no legacy issues, which is great. It's a great starter project, which is great. Uh, we've been at the forefront of reforms to make it happen from an international financing point of view, which is great. But at the very heart of it, the most important thing is that it's a high-grade mine, straightforward metallurgy, and it's robust economics. That's the key, a wonderful starter project, frankly. Uh, to allow us to then tackle the other things in the pipeline, uh, you know, down the track. Uh, milestones, we're, we're tre trending the, this, this, this slide, which I think has been in the public domain now for, for uh, a quarter or two, I've lost track. But uh, we are in the thick of, um, of closing procedures. I'll explain what I mean by that now. I think we've said several times publicly that um, there were three critical hurdles or uh, requirements for us to get into the detail with the banks. They really wanted three things in place before they were prepared to go into detailed uh, documentation. So we assembled the detailed documentation for everything else, but the banks held their line very hard that three things had to happen. One is country membership for one of them with the country, major, you know, uh, uh, country to country issue, not just a company to bank issue. And uh, we've, we, we assisted in that process. It wasn't our doing, but we assisted and facilitated and we delivered that, I think, in March from memory. Uh, Security, the banks required this to be treated as a red zone, even though it's a green zone in security lingo. Uh, and we did that and the government deployed uh, military uh, personnel apparatus to blanket the district in April, which calmed down the whole district. Not that this district is, is a problem district, but the civil war that ended a couple of years ago destabilized law and order throughout the country. And it just needed to be brought down to a tempo where you could move people, hundreds of people and equipment around without fear. And that was done for us in April and the system, security system keeps being ramped up um, from there, which is happening as we speak. The third thing was foreign exchange controls. Um, we, we need relaxation, exemption on a number of fronts. And now that we, and we were granted this previously, but now that we're getting down to tin tax, we needed fine detail. The fine print had to be agreed between the banks and the central bank of the country. And uh, that's been a pretty, pretty, you know, pretty intense process to negotiate you know, between banks and the central bank and to be the go-between and to make it happen as a reform of the country's regulations it has been very challenging for us, but we've succeeded. And um, there were very important meetings this week in Addis and my very detailed uh, summary report that I received in the last hour, frankly, was a string of thumbs up, which I take to mean things are going well. So, uh, you know, I'm very proud. I know it's taken a long time. Uh, it, but, you know, it is a frontier market for mining. The countries have been through a lot of change. We've weathered their storms and we're positioned at the front of the queue. And I'm very proud of where we stand and very optimistic of where we're heading. Having done those three things, uh, what's next? Well, the technical sign-off, tick. 
security side of tick, although, of course, we, we monitor, we have monthly monitoring, and it has to stay that way as we ramp up. Uh, detailed documentation uh, now flying around, uh, circulating for approvals from all the multiple parties. There's about a dozen parties. The most important thing, really, is board and credit approval from the banks. That's two-thirds of the capital. And um, when you melt down the whole, you know, package, so to speak. And um, that's the most important thing. And I think that the uh, this week's progress with the central bank opens the door for that to now proceed. So I'm very thrilled about that. And, and the banks have been working with us for years. You know, they're very serious banks. They're coming into a sector for the first time, opening up a sector for a country. Uh, and uh, they, they're very intense uh, and they, um, they, they expect it to be done properly, correctly from all points of view, uh, equator principles, IFC performance standards, central bank uh, regulations to conform to international practice. Uh, so it's taken time to be at the, at the forefront, um, but there we are. I, I believe we're at that point now where we can proceed. Um, first cab off the rank to me, the most important milestone will be um, bank credit approval. That Everything flows from that. We're preparing the community already. We were confident that we'd achieve this and we're already preparing the community for, um, for what comes next, which is uh, moving them in stages, uh, small, small uh, bites, if you like, um, uh, and um, procurement uh, will follow signing of detailed documentation. Um, I know that we've we, we've put a lot of detail of this in our quarterlies and RNSs, but um, you know confirmation of tenure, return of our expiration licenses, all these things. You know we 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 must hold the line until all these things are done firmly, formally, definitively, um, before we release capital. And that's that's well understood. Uh, and again, I think it's fair to say respected. And there are no closed doors to us. Uh, all doors are open. And, you know, today uh, uh, my team was in um, Kalgoorlie showing, showing the ministry uh, and friends from Ethiopia around and, um, you know, full collaboration and um, it's wonderful. Um, this is just reiterating that, Juba, uh, that um, the two Saudi projects will, will come along behind uh, to a copy. Uh, the board, a very strong non-exec director uh, composition there, head of mining finance from Nedbank, previous head of mining finance from Nedbank, that is, previous head of gold fields of South Africa, uh, gold operations, and um, uh, a previous head of uh, European Bank of Reconstruction and Development on the ESG side for 20 years or so. So we're, we're, we're preparing the board for what's coming now. Uh, likewise, on the management side, we've brought in some world-class management to start preparing uh, uh, recruitment systems, uh, policies, procedures across the board as we go into, uh, you know, what we expect will now be the launch uh, in the coming quarter, as we foreshadowed, and 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 the uh, going from fifty people in in uh, Ethiopia to approximately one thousand over the, the following eighteen months. Um, Mark, could I ask you how much time I've already chewed up? I don't have a clock in front of me, the way the screen's configured. Yeah, no problems. 24 minutes. Okay. I'll just skip over some pictures. I won't take more than five minutes because I'd like to leave 30 minutes for questions. Uh, the first thing is Tula Kapi. Um a great starter project because it had no legacy issues, unlike many mine sites. It has no legacy issues environmentally or socially. Uh, so that's why we, we, we picked it. Plus, of course, it's robust economics. 
just skipping through some of the stats, if you look at those stats in your own time, you'll see how robust it is. We get everything signed off independently. You know, we're, we started a small exploration company and we're putting together hundreds of millions of dollars for development, plus also just the mine services agreement is a few hundred million dollars. So, you know, there's a package of contracts here being assembled, which is about a billion dollars of contracting for development and operations. And the way one does that, you have to have the right people, obviously, uh, you know, with, with, with international standing in, 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 in this uh, industry and having done financings of the nature, this nature before. But you wrap it in the brand of sign-off by independence of world, world stature. And that's what we've done all the way through, um, which is how major development banks and major multinationals can participate in the funding at the project level. I must say, it needs to be said that the amount of capital raised at the project and subsidiary level for Tulukapi uh, is actually more than the aim market has raised for any mining company or aggregate of all mining companies for the last year or so. So, you know, AIM, AIM has been particularly weak within a particularly weak sector internationally on stock market terms. Uh, and yet we've been charging ahead uh, in an emerging market because of the positioning and the robustness of the project. And um, you know, one has to be proud. Um, of the fact that we're able to do that despite a stock market that frankly uh, would not have backed it because uh, it doesn't have access to that sort of capital today and I dare say anyone who is familiar with the stock market for juniors and the A market in particular would be aware of that. Uh, the drilling of the ore body, uh, we believe there's potential for over a million ounces additional down there. Uh, that's the ore body exposed at surface. Uh, when we first turned up, for one of the first things we did was expose it at the surface, sample it, taste it, so to speak. Uh, 3D imagery of uh, of the plant. Uh, we, you can see a movie of it if you if you want. We can arrange, uh, draw, you know, flying through the plant in detail, and a 3D imagery of the underground can be arranged of the of the pit rather than the underground site layout. Uh, nothing unconventional. Um, this is just showing the grade distribution in the in the uh, in the pit, and also the the added plans to get down to the underground. Saudi, different topography, but same geology. Where our sites are. Uh, a six kilometre long Gossen surface expression of mineralization, which we've confirmed at Hawea, now in the top 15% VMS in the world, even though it's a new discovery of ours. So it's going to keep growing. Uh, the Saudi stock market's taken off for mining, uh, producing company a third the scale of our resources in Saudi is capped at over $1 billion. So Saudi actually is quite different, if you like, to what I was saying about the Western stock markets for junior mining. Uh, Jibal Kutman, it's a string of pits along a, a well-defined structure. Uh, just saying, showing you sections of these ore bodies. Again, I'm trying to hurry it up now so we can have questions. Uh, we just exposed in the um, Wadi Bida mineral belt where Hawea is, a, a VMS belt. Uh, we've just exposed another a VMS system on another license uh, about 50 kilometres away from Hawea. So it's within trucking distance, but there you are. You can see it, but we've got no results to report. All we've done is expose it at surface and we're sort of cooking again to to put some uh, some work around this one okay so i thank you very much for listening to the presentation i hope those of you who are new to the company uh found it interesting and i'll uh, leave it for mark to to uh, work through the questions that have been received that's thank great you.
Thank you so much, Harry. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions. Just using that Q&A tab on the right-hand corner of the screen. But just before we go into today's questions, I'd like to remind you that the recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your Investor Meet company dashboard. Um, Harry, we did receive a number of pre-submitted questions. And of course, given the number of attendees on today's call, you've, you've, you've had <laughs> quite a few more. So forgive me if there's a little bit repetitive. and if we're, we're trying to eliminate that as much as we can. Um, but a lot of questions do talk around or to, to, do talk to the funding um, situation. Or if I read one specifically, you stated that syndicate lenders meeting with the company this week is one of the final action points uh, remaining to the completion of the uh, Tulukapi financing package. Are there any more final action points uh, remaining? Um, I think that covers a lot of the uh, funding questions. Yeah, I, I think I covered that. And I mean, the main thing now is that the, um, from the sound of it, the central bank issues, the fine print of the central bank issues are, are being, uh, you know, um, put in place. Um, with the meetings that have taken place this week, uh, really the next step is the um, to uh, await the final credit and board approvals of the banks. And I think everything from there on is procedural. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a little mention of resettlement in the last update. How long does the first phase take to achieve? And um, will this have any bearing on first production? Um, is there equipment ready now uh, to clear the site and prepare the layings of footings? Resettlement is chopped up into um, stages. We don't plan to resettle the 350 households in one step. Uh, so it's well sequenced out, well planned out. Um, and the last phase of it will be two years from now. Um, so it's really you know, move the people off the airstrip site, move the people off the plant site initially. Um, um, so yes, it's all sequenced out and, and scheduled in. There's no no delays in that score. Uh, the other question was: are, are there is there equipment in the country ready to be mobilised? Yes, there's plenty of equipment in in Ethiopia. There's very a lot of construction in Ethiopia. A lot of construction. Just one example is is it's got Africa's largest uh, hydro scheme being built. Roads being built everywhere. Stadiums, buildings a lot of construction work so there's no problem with um access to, to, to kit for earth moving thank you um will there be a similar photo press opportunity uh to the umbrella agreement signing when the final financing agreement is signed later this month by all parties is there some form of pr push that you'll have um uh, i don't know that uh... I'm not used to banks asking for photographers to come in to watch them give credit approval, but um, yeah, we, we, we'll 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 create, you know, we'll take every opportunity we can to um, you know to record for shareholders uh, um, everything that that's that's reasonable to do so. Um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll of course we will. Yeah, thank you. Um... Turning the dial slightly, will uh, Jabal Quantum be in production before Tula Capi? And what percentage ownership in GNM remain? Um, Jabal Kutman is um, not ready to trigger. Um, I think I touched on that earlier in the presentation. So um, I'd, I'd be surprised. But in the scheme of mining projects that are being developed for the long term, I would expect that because it uh, has a shorter time frame for development, not having a community to uh, to deal with, so to speak, um, that um, you know uh, it might be within six months or nine months or something like that. But it's it's I, I don't see at this stage that it would be faster. And the other question was percentages. I've always said twenty five to forty percent. You know, we started at forty, and you know, given the the you know, how would I put it? One has to be a custodian of the capital as well as maintaining progress as best one can. And if shareholders rate the company at a certain market cap, um, it hasn't allowed us to keep up with 40%. It's as simple as that. But turning it around the other way, um, the, the, the value that's been created from the expenditure that we have made dwarfs the expenditure we've made. 
So, you know, we, we as a partner can't have our cake and eat it. We either put the money in or we dilute. And we've struck a balance on that. We've put some money in and we've taken some dilution, always trying to protect the interests of shareholders. And I think that as, you know, the obsession about Tula Kapi, for obvious reasons, people wanted to get going, but the obsession about Tula Kapi um, will, will, will um, you know, alleviate itself as we start moving forward at Tula Kapi and, um, and then we'll be able to tackle the Saudi side more, more aggressively as well, I think. Thank you. Question here from uh, David, who asks, if we don't manage to get financial closure this quarter, do we lose another year due to the wet season? I never said we have financial closure this quarter. Then you've got to be careful the def definition of closure. I mean money, uh, money in the bank. Uh, what what I've said is is credit approval, and um, and, and it all flows from that. And that uh, what I've said, or what we've said, more correctly, is that we would launch during Q4, which is closure. Um, and that's been a timetable. Um, yeah, so uh, I... Um, sorry, have I missed part of the question, uh, Mark? No, did I come no, I think you've uh, I think you've uh, covered covered that off. Mm. Let me just turn to a question for Tom that's that's just come in. Any interest in a Saudi stock market listing? Yeah, uh, we've invested a lot of time on this on this question on this matter because you know to be a bit flippant, we're a bit like rock stars in this game in Saudi, having been applauded and patted on the back by many, frankly, for having had the foresight to be there for 15 years and make discoveries. And now we're getting a bit of that within the industry for Ethiopia, to be honest, albeit you wouldn't know it from the share price. But but um, the Saudi authorities have only uh, had one IPO in the mining sector in years, and there's only two listed mining stocks, both in production. So the, the Saudi stock market's away a bit away from admitting pre-production companies. I, I think it's fair to say that um, the, the joint venture uh, uh, will look at all alternatives as we build a mining house. We, we're, did, we're, we're quite confident we're going to build a mining house. It's not a one-year job. It's not a two-year job. But we will build a mining house. The Al Rashid, uh, very serious people. We're very comfortable as partners. It's a solid relationship, and uh, we will build a mining house. Uh, and we will, as a joint venture, optimise the capital for each project. The individual projects are now being put into their own subsidiaries, uh, into post holding companies uh, we've agreed to insert. And this is all to do with creating flexibility for us as a partnership to build the business very seriously as we as we move forward because Saudi is taking off and the partners have agreed to look at all possibilities. So a long-winded answer because I'd be deluding myself and the listener to say that w we can come along and list in Saudi when they've never done it, you know. We're very interested in what we're doing and very supportive in Saudi. But um, we'll pick our moment for the best possible outcome for the shareholders of, of both partners. Um, not to say that Kefi isn't looking at other ideas as well for itself, uh, but um, in Saudi, I think I've answered the question. Yep, most definitely. Um, if I may just turn to a question from uh, Desmond. Thank you, Desmond, for your question. If any of the banks refuse credit approval, what's the plan? Do we have a backstop lenders and what's uh, our options at this point? Well, the banks have invested, I think, three three years or four years. They, they've traversed a, a civil war. They've stayed in there. They're in Addis Ababa today to uh, sort out the fine print, so to speak, on exchange controls. Um, they're serious people. They're not doing this with a view to rejecting it. It's not like it's a secret. I've already sat in front of credit committees and the presidents of each of the banks. So this is serious stuff, and it's not just coming out of the blue to anybody. There's been a very heavy investment of time in this project for some years by these banks. And uh, they're, they're development banks who have Ethiopia as a member country. 
Now, to get back to your question, um, there'll be no shortage of takers of the project if for some reason Kefi was not capable of proceeding, but that, I don't expect that to be the case. Having, having done what we've achieved, notwithstanding the challenges thrown at us, uh, there's no shortage of takers, but the prize here for shareholders is to uh, close that gap between market cap and intrinsic value. And the only way to do that is to deliver, and that's what we're going to do. Thank you. Um, Tim says, very good overview, uh, Harry, thanks. You're very close to this process, so it's reasonable to ask, what is your gut feel for when the banks will sign this off, i.e., uh, what else do they need? And I know you've touched on that, but uh, I find that you can help uh, answer Tim's question. Well, I, I, you know, the only reason I won't answer that explicitly is that I don't think it's respectful of the internal decision-making processes of major banking institutions for me to tell you when they schedule their meetings. I think it's presumptuous. Uh, it's it's not our business to talk about the scheduling of meetings inside banks. But what I will say to you is that when we we said, listen, you need to come down to Addis Ababa next week to sort out the fine detail for yourselves face to face with us present uh, so that you're completely satisfied, you can stand in front of the committee and answer all the questions, they're on the plane. So they're not mucking around, but I, I, I don't like to, to, to presume to you know, talk about what their internal processes are, uh, it's, it's it's not for me to say that, but it's it, no one no one wanting to waste any time. We all want to launch, uh, you know, we all want to launch in the next quarter. Thank you. Um, let's have a look at the question uh, from Steve. Um, are other members of the syndicate wait, sitting waiting to sign as soon as we get credit and board approval? Is that all in place? Yes, I think we've said, the short answer is yes, and there's a process, and I think I've laid it out, or we've laid it out in some detail in the, in the recent quarterly in particular, uh, but also, you know, added some things in, um, in the recent RNSs. And the main thing is to, the, the, you know, the frustration to a shareholder is that, you know, you know when can you finish? But on the other hand, it's in shareholders' interest that we hold the line. We will not budge until security was in order. Okay, it's in order. We will not budge until AFC has its membership, so it has the protection it needs to do the lending. That was granted. We will not budge until um, tenure over our licenses is affirmed in black and white, in ink. We will not, but these are, we're now moving from the negotiation stage into the documentation stage. And in fact, some of the documentation stage has been dragged forward, if you like. We're doing some of it already in terms of fine print. But it's, there's nothing in the timetable, which is what I would call big ticket items of negotiation. And, and I do emphasize that from the beginning of this year, uh, I don't think it's possible to have expected any more support or collaboration from the government. It's a very determined government, frankly, the hardest working politicians I've ever seen, uh, seven days a week, driven to rebuild the economy and to put Ethiopia back onto its growth path. And we're the first in the queue for mining, which is a high priority. So, um, you know, I think, I think it's under control. Okay, thank you. Um, just a question coming from uh, Tom just a moment ago. So thank you, Tom. Have you looked at uh, selling either project to a larger mining business and have you seen any approaches? Um, you know, there's, in, in, the, in this game, it's a small world. You know everybody. You, uh, you bump into people you've known for decades. If ever we need to sell something, we know where to go. But by the same token, everybody's in it for the best deal. And if, if the question is, what's the best way to optimize return, then the gap between market cap and underlying value tells you that the best way to optimize is to deliver. And the fact, you know, if we couldn't, have, if we couldn't fund 
these projects at the subsidiary or project level, we'd have no choice. And we'd get a small premium over the share market. The lower the share market is driven by short-term people looking for a quick buck, the, the lower the, the takeout price on the stock and the lower the price for any sale of a, of a project. So, you know, we've, we've just got to bide our time. And um, this is a long game. Uh, the average gestation of any project from the discovery hole to production globally has now crept up from 15 to close to 20 years. Coincidentally, that's what we seem to be looking at in this Arabian Nubian Shield, although perhaps a bit quicker than that for Tulakapi, where we've only been involved half that time. So, you know, it's, 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 you, you can't be respected by government if you're a flipper. And you can't build social license if you're a flipper. Uh, you have to be a developer. But if uh, for some reason it takes a sale to execute the project, we would sell it in the blink of an eye to do the right, <clears throat> to do the right thing by, sorry, by all the other stakeholders. But right here and now, all the stakeholders want us to deliver and to be part of it. Thanks, um, Harry. Um, question I'm sure you can't really answer, but um, I'm going to pose it just so people know that we're not uh, hiding any questions. This question's around, you know, will the company need further funding um, in the short term? I think we, we, we set that out quite clearly in the, in the quarterly report that uh, we... We repaid all the liabilities at the end of uh, at the end of June, and we made a placing six seven million pounds. Um, and we we do indeed have working capital facilities to carry us through to post closing. So, so I think that's all set out in in that quarterly report quite clearly. Great, thank you very much indeed. Um, question here around the business plan with KSA is one in place, and uh, any comments? Is a business plan in place? It, um, well, I should hope so. Yes, we are. We have a business plan. There's been tens of millions of dollars spent. Um, if you're asking where are we heading, we're heading for developing two projects and elevating a pipeline of other projects. Some of them will be developed by us. Uh, something that's multi-billion dollar possibility would be joint ventured out or sold by the joint venture. Um, the business plan is not not sort of esoteric. I think it's fairly self-evident. Thank you. Okay, Harry, I think um, that pretty much, I, I, I probably forgive me for anybody who has asked the question that we haven't covered, but I'm just really mindful not to uh, annoy anyone by repeating the same uh, questions and getting you to respond to them. So what I'll do, Harry, is is I'll give the Q&A, uh, bring the Q&A to an end, and I'll supply you with any of these other questions for you to review. And if there are any additional responses, Harry, we can put those and publish those to investors where it's appropriate to do so. Um, with that in mind, Harry, and we're, we're coming up to uh, to 50, 50 odd minutes. Um, if I may just ask you for a few closing comments. I know investor feedback is important to you, and I will shortly do, direct those on the call to give you their thoughts and expectations. But as I say, if I may just hand back to you for just a few closing comments, that'd be great. Well, I'd like, I suppose, uh, people who are new to the company, you're lucky. You are at a time of inflection and takeoff and you haven't had to weather the storms that the company has weathered uh, in frontier markets for mining, where deregulation had to be tackled partly by us, uh, certainly in Ethiopia. Um, people forget we, we lost eight years in Saudi on a regulatory issue that stalled us completely. Um, that. That also was another example, if you like, of how how risky, I suppose, it is to go into a frontier market for your sector. But we 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 we, we you know we um, we carried on deliberately and tenaciously. And um, I think people in the industry generally, um, you know, recognise that that's the only way you can make it happen. And I think the fact that all these companies that I had on that slide that have come to the Arabian Ibn Shield, a testament to the global recognition of the value of our mission. 
Um, and I think when Tula Cup is uh, launched, there'll be a remarkable transformation of perceptions around the company because because perceptions, I, I do know, uh, very much clouded by the difficulties and challenges and disappointments of what we've had to go through, um, you know, to get to this point. But that'll be a thing of the past very shortly. And there's no point bemoaning how difficult it was. It is, or it was what it was, and we're heading where we're heading. And that's what counts. And so welcome for those of you who are looking at us for the first time. And thank you for your patience and support for those of you who've hung in there with us. Uh, thank you, Mark. That's great, Harry. Thank you once again for updating uh, investors on today's call. Can I please ask investors not to close this session as we're now automatically redirect you for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. It's only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure it'll be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Kefi Gold and Copper PLC, I'd like to thank you for attending today's pre presentation and uh, good afternoon to you, Harry. Thank you. Thank you.